These little pack saws are great until they break, and then you have to make do with what's left. Today we're going to take the saw blade from that kit and then use some natural materials and some materials from our pack in order to make a usable miniature buck saw. First you're going to need three pieces of wood that are roughly two inches shorter than the buck saw blade itself, some 550 cord for the top, and then a small spindle that we can use to tighten down and add tension. If you've got a couple of nails or pins that's helpful, you can make those from wood, but I find the blade tends to bite into them and it's better to have metal pins. We'll start off by using the blade to make a blade width slot in the bottom of the two pieces of wood that make up your vertical supports. You should cut deep enough for that blade to recess completely so that your pins have some material to bite into. If you're too shallow on this, it can rip right out the bottom. Typically, buck saws are much larger and much more robust than the model we're making, but as we said in the beginning, we're making do with the saw blade that we have. Now we have to determine the pivot point. If we make that pivot point too low, we won't have very much depth, but if we make it too high, we won't be able to create enough tension on the blade with our spindle device on top. So we're going to pick an area just about the middle of the vertical supports and start notching them back and forth here with my knife. I've cut out a few chunks of the whittling process and sped a couple other chunks up so that you don't have to watch a guy carve this from scratch over the course of 40 or 45 minutes, whatever it took me to do the entire project. It's important here to keep these portions very flat. We're not creating a curved surface, otherwise your pivot point can slip out of the middle. This carving I'm doing on the end is just for looks. It doesn't impact the strength or do anything for you functionally. It just looks better. I find that when improvising my own equipment, I really prefer it to look nice at the end instead of something that was just cobbled together, even if it is something that was just cobbled together. The last thing I'm doing on these vertical supports is carving a notch for multiple layers of 550 to go on the top. This prevents the 550 cord from slipping off the top when we start increasing the tension on this buck saw. I do keep a little drill on a T-handle in my ruck. Here I'm just making do with one that I grabbed off the bench, but it is very handy to have something that can drill precise holes in the field. Of course, you could do this with an awl or a bit of metal heated in the fire. There's multiple ways to make these nice little holes, but if it's something that you're going to be doing a lot, it's nice to pack a little tool that can do it well. Now that we've got the pins in, the notch is cut in the center for the pivot point and a notch cut on the top for the 550 cord, these vertical pieces are done and we can start moving on to creating that pivot point itself. This next piece is a little more critical than the uprights because its length will determine the stability of your saw. If it's too long, your saw will be a square and it will rack back and forth too easily. And if it's too short, you're going to have trouble creating enough tension on that blade to make it usable. It's also important to make sure that when you're carving these, that they line up with each other and you don't have a twist. That twist would reflect directly into your saw. Finally, we're at the point where we can start assembly. I used a tiny bowline on the end and passed the body of the line through the bowline to create this slip loop out of a fixed loop. This is a pretty secure way of cinching down on the material. Now we're going to pass this around. I like to go around about five times. This allows me to get multiple passes on each side of the uprights and allows me to finish my knot off on the opposite side of my starting knot. So I don't have a bunch of knots on one side and then a clean looking saw on the other. Of course, this is just personal preference. I like to have symmetry. I don't do anything fancy to terminate the line here, it's just a quick inline Canadian jam. It's not even all that tight of a knot. If you're not familiar with these terms, I have tutorials on my channel, but instead of reteaching knots every single time, I refer back to those. Unfortunately, I seem to have made the pivot point too long and it has a racking issue as anticipated. So we're going to start trimming down that centerpiece until we can create that trapezoid that we're looking for. You can also see us having some trouble with that middle spindle, so we're going to do some finishing work on that as well. Now I don't mind this issue of having too much material on that center pivot point. It's easier to walk it back and remove material than it is to go procure another piece of wood or damage another tree in the process. You may hear people call that center pivot point a stretcher. That is the correct term to use when building a buck saw, but I'm using terminology here that we can all understand. If we've gotten our dimensions right, this should be the final tensioning. I try to go for three entire revolutions. Some people will carve a notch in the stretcher 
to allow for that spindle to lock into place. I do that occasionally. I find that it wasn't very useful here in this situation because I lost all of the racking that was becoming a problem when I had a stretcher that was too long. Don't be afraid to crank down on this thing and really add a lot of tension. That's why I use green wood. We're using steel on the bottom and we're using multiple layers of 550 cord. So really put on the tension here. Otherwise you're gonna have a flimsy saw. Now the test cuts, I did get some binding, but that's mostly because I'm cutting these six inch pieces down into three and inch and a half long pieces. If I was cutting a tree and allowing the tree to bend over while I was cutting, it would be no problem whatsoever. I also like that I can cut straight down onto my work surface here without scratching it because the two vertical risers there, uh, called the handle and the bow technically, uh, are preventing me from bringing that blade all the way down into this nice uh, work surface that I've prepared. Overall, it works pretty great for being a couple of pieces of wood and some 550 cord.